Hello, my name is Mark Babbitt, and I'm sitting here with my friend and co-author, Chris Edmonds. Uh, Good Comes First, Chris, is coming out very soon. It's coming out very soon. We could not be more excited. We've been thinking about this stuff for 30 years each and been writing this book for three years. So we've been very, very attuned to how we can create a tool, a resource, actionable insights for leaders to be able to create a work culture where their team members, their associates, their employees are respected, validated, and honored. What I find when I, and you and I both experience that, is we work with leaders to help them define what values mean. What does respect mean? What are the two or three behaviors that you want team members to demonstrate with each other, with their bosses? You want bosses to demonstrate with not only current staff, but potential hires, customers, etc. You have to get very, very specific, in essence, create measurable behaviors that define what your values are. And then most leaders would say, cool, let's announce those. (laughs) And then everyone will magically embrace them. Well, that's not what happens. So just as leaders have been taught and trained and incented over decades, maybe centuries, to formalize performance expectations and monitor the snot out of those and don't celebrate much, but redirect a lot, mentor a lot, The issue is that there's great team members that you have on your team today who have wonderful values, who treat people respectfully, but none of that is important. None of that is shared across the workforce. And so it's these lone players that are doing their best, right? Trying to demonstrate values. And they're sometimes seen as kind of fluffy, you know, kumbaya around the campfire kind of a thing. So the idea of having the definition part of this, yes, formalize your performance expectations and hold people accountable, that is not surprisingly an issue for almost every leader on the planet. Accountability for performance is tough. We've got a model that will help with that, but we use the same exact model to make sure that leaders and team members are behaving nicely, behaving respectfully, treating others with civility. And we measure that and we mentor those that aren't aligned and we celebrate the tar out of those that are doing well in performance, doing well in respect, and especially those that are doing both. Well, it's, it's, uh, the definition is, is key to uh, good comes first and, a, and an uncompromising company culture. You and I work with a client and, and we ask them to define integrity. And we asked, what, 20 people? And, and we got 14 different answers. And so how do we get people on the same page, e- even on these core, you, your company says that's a core value, that we're all about this, and then we, for, we get 14 different answers. And so it becomes a, it becomes a war of words and, and uh, mentalities, mindsets. And I think that's what Good Comes First does, is, is it helps clearly define that message so it's not ambiguous. It's not open to interpretation. No, this is how we see integrity here. Here's what it means to us. And here's another key thing that came from that work was a lot of people, especially younger employees, tied integrity to social issues. Yeah. And we can't act one way inside the walls and then ignore what's going on in the outside of the world. Now, we started writing this book three years ago, but from the very beginning, one of our one of our cornerstones for good comes first was use our voice for good. Now, since we started writing that, we've had several issues, Black Lives Matter, um, the police injustice, uh, social inequities that that have surfaced. And, and it's just magnified, almost in a way that the hybrid or the remote workforce that we started talking about three years ago in the book, it we started perfecting that as the book was being written. I mean, socially in, in, in the real world, we corporate America got a lot better at remote work over the last 15, 16 months, but we haven't gotten better yet at the social issues. We're still fighting those every day in the news. And, and the, the, the cornerstone, use our voice for good. I know you're just as, as proud of it as I am, but we, we can no longer sit back and go, all we care about is our shareholders. All we care about is market share. We have to have a voice in the world and we have to stand up for what's right. And that's literally putting good first, not just 
on the third quarter report, not just in our, in our annual shareholders meeting, but every day we're living our values. Learn more about Chris and Mark's new book and purchase your copy at goodcomesfirst.com.